Tuesday, May 11, 2021. Thanks for joining us. I'm George Gerbo. The U.S. energy industry is slowly getting back on its feet after a crippling cyber attack on the Colonial Pipeline underscored deep vulnerabilities in critical American infrastructure. Then Wolfgang and Ryan Lovelace report the FBI pinned the ransomware attack on the mysterious hacker group DarkSide, which is believed to have headquarters in Eastern Europe and potentially Russia. White House officials were quick to stress that they believe the Colonial Pipeline was targeted by a criminal enterprise and not a government. President Biden told reporters that Russia bears at least some of the blame for DarkSide's actions. The pipeline was targeted Saturday, just weeks after U.S. sanctions were issued on Russia for the devastating SolarWinds hack of the federal government and private industry. Cybersecurity experts in the private sector and government say ransomware attacks, in which cybercriminals hold hostage data from businesses and agencies, are increasing in the United States and are being aimed at a wide range of targets. Georgia-based Colonial Pipeline transports about 45% of all fuel that's consumed on the East Coast. They say their systems damaged by the attack will be back to normal by the end of this week. The president of the Postal Police Officers Association says the law enforcement arm of the U.S. Postal Service has prioritized surveilling Americans over safeguarding the mail. Ryan Lovelace reports Association President Frank Albergo said intelligence gathered by postal inspectors, who operate independently from postal police, has not made its way to the postal police officers. He said postal police officers like himself didn't use the USPS's Internet Covert Operations Program, and he didn't know who at the USPS did. The U.S. Postal Inspection Service allegedly spied on American social media accounts via the Internet Covert Operations Program. According to a bulletin first published by Yahoo News, analysts monitored right-wing parlor and telegram accounts ahead of planned protests and observed users on Facebook and Twitter. A reminder that you can find all these stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash front page. Don't have access to the Times yet? Visit WashingtonTimes.com slash George and get 25% off your annual subscription. After two years of political stalemate and a week of momentous developments, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu finds himself on the outside looking in, even as he seeks to project strength amid rising instability in Jerusalem. After a flurry of Hamas rocket attacks on the Holy City on Monday, an unwavering Netanyahu said the Palestinian militant group had crossed a red line and would pay a heavy price. Israel responded quickly with airstrikes on Hamas targets throughout Gaza as the strife continues. On the Israeli political front, however, the man who's been prime minister since 2009 is running out of options to maintain a governing coalition in the face of an ongoing trial on charges of bribery, fraud, and breach of trust. After the most recent election in March, the fourth consecutive one in Israel that's been inconclusive, Netanyahu failed to form a coalition government. On Capitol Hill, Congress wants to spend $100 billion to expand broadband internet to poor rural and inner-city communities and make permanent a COVID-19 program that pays $50 a month of the internet bill for low-income families. Kerry Murakami reports the Accessible, Affordable Internet for All Act, sponsored by House Majority Whip Jim Clyburn of South Carolina and Minnesota Senator Amy Klobuchar, includes $80 billion to subsidize the construction of high-speed internet in areas of the country that don't have it. Although 90% of Americans have access to internet connections that are fast enough to do homework, stream movies, and the like, Democrats say rural school districts had to rig school buses with Wi-Fi so their students could do homework during pandemic shutdowns. The issue fits into Democrats' priority of reducing racial inequity in the United States. Republicans say the bill's proposed price controls and subsidies, however, are more examples of a push for the expansion of government. And finally, Dave Boyer takes a look at the constantly expanding portfolio of issues on the plate of Vice President Kamala Harris. In just her first three months in office, the vice president has amassed responsibility for, among others, the situation on the southern U.S. border with Mexico, selling the president's multi-trillion dollar jobs bills, a push to unionize more of the U.S. workforce, and coordinating relations with world leaders. Find all of today's front page stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash front page or on the Washington Times app, and subscribe for free to the front page. Just search Washington Times on your favorite podcast platforms. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Watch Times for breaking news, sports, commentary, and more. For the Washington Times, I'm George Gerbo.